Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to create a liquidy melted person effect. So I've got this photo open and the first thing we want to do is cut out our subject. Now there's a lot of different ways you can cut stuff out in Photoshop, but in this case we don't need too exact of a selection. So we can go over to our quick selection tool, make sure we're working on add to selection mode, and then we can use the bracket keys on our keyboard to increase or decrease the brush size until it's workable to paint in all the different crevices and spaces of our subject. Don't be afraid to pick up and put down your brush stroke multiple times in order to get a selection. And if you mess anything up, just go edit, undo, or control Z. So in this case, I got a little bit of extra space in between the legs and a little bit of that shadow, but it doesn't matter. I'm only going to be kind of melting off this piece of the arm. So from here, you want to right click and go to layer via copy. That'll put a copy of your selection on its own new layer. So now we want to make another copy of this. So you can use the shortcut command J to duplicate it, or you can right click and duplicate the layer. So on this middle copy, we're going to go to filter and open up the liquify menu so we can begin liquefying things up. Now here's where you can get as creative and artistic as you want and twist things around but you have essentially a few tools in this menu to work with. You have the basic liquify finger which is just like a finger painting pull and drag type of tool. You also have these different swirls and push type of tools which work in different ways and you have some reconstructive options if you go too far and you want to mend things together. So the other thing you should look at is the brush tool options. Here you can select the size of the brush and I'd recommend being kind of detailed because you're kind of painting in the swirls in a nice way. And you have things like the density and the pressure which indicate how much strength this brush should have. So at 0 or 10 pressure you can see I, I can click and drag on this point forever and it doesn't really pull much. But at 100% pressure you can see I can click and drag things a bit more easily and if I raise the density as well then things really start pulling completely. Alternatively another cool trick you can have to scale things back is click the reconstruct button and you can move this slider over to zero to take it back to normal or you can kind of just scale back your stretchings by moving it back to like 45 or something and then going back at it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my time in order to get a cool melted effect and I'll catch up with you guys when I'm satisfied with my results. Alright so after messing around with different brush sizes and pressures and small brushes and larger brushes I've managed to come up with something that I like. So I'm going to press OK and I'll see that my effect already looks kind of cool because remember we had that clean copy on top so it kind of keeps a bit of the original edge and it looks like the person is melting away a bit. Our last step is to blend these two copies together. So on the top and clean copy, you want to highlight the layer and go to Layer, Layer Mask, Reveal All. This is going to create a layer mask for us to begin masking away certain portions of the image. So I'm going to grab a soft round brush and lower the hardness down all the way to zero and just use a decent size for the size of my cutout. And using the color black as my foreground color, I'll highlight the mask and I'll just paint away some of these edges. So you can see the arm starts to blend in with all the twirls that we made. And that gives it a much more realistic, I guess. This is not a realistic effect, but it gives it a more clean and uh, it sells the effect more. Now that's the bulk of the effect and you could call it done here but there's one more step you can take to really sell it in certain cases where you can. And remember we still had our original photo underneath all this. So there's technically a copy of the guy underneath everything and that's still leaving behind some small traces that don't make sense like this portion on the arm, and this portion on the side of the body. Now one solution we could use to deal with this is to right click on our background layer and duplicate it. And then on this duplicated background layer, grab our lasso tool and select our subject so we can kind of remove him. So once you have a pretty rough close selection of your subject, you can right click and fill the selection with content aware. And this is going to do its best job of removing your image from the photo 
And of course, it's not exact. You see the shadow looks all messed up now. But that's okay, because we can turn on our, our copied images and kind of cover all that up. And then if you needed to be really clean, if when you turned your image back on, it didn't fix certain areas and there was some mess ups, you could go to layer, layer mask, hide all, so create a layer mask on this section, then turn your other layers back on, and then grab a soft round brush, and using white, just like we did before, except this time, we're gonna hide these portions by kind of revealing that layer mask. So this will allow you to kind of pinpoint which areas you do need to clean up without deleting too much. So you see this area on the leg here, boom. Now it looks more realistic. And just a bit of a tricky way and a bit much to go around, but it really does help sell the effect when you're able to remove some of those mess ups and areas that don't make sense. So that's my final result on how to create this melted dispersion effect. If you guys enjoyed it, definitely leave a like below and check out some more Photoshop tutorials in the playlists on my channel. And definitely subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all new future videos. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.